All right, what's up guys? Today we're gonna to be talking about how to expand your storage pool by adding an additional hard drive to your Synology disk station. So to do this, you really need to make sure you have a free bay on the Synology disk station itself. Do not buy one of those expansion units and create a volume between the units, meaning you have a RAID that goes across both your Synology and the expansion unit, because that would mean if that one cable failed that connects the two of them, you would lose the entire pool. So instead, what you need to do is just create two different volumes, one on the Synology itself and one on the expansion unit. And if you have multiple expansion units, just create multiple volumes. This way, if a single cable fails, all the hard drives still work and can be put into a new expansion unit and it will just go on normally. So the other thing you need is you need a drive that is the size or bigger of the smallest drive in the pool. If you're using regular RAID, just get the size of the smallest drive as the additional space will not be helpful. But if you're using SHR, Synology's hybrid RAID, you can actually get additional storage by adding in bigger drives. And I've already explained how that all works in my Synology versus RAID video, and I'll link that in the description. All right, so right now I've got a Synology DS1819 Plus with five four terabyte Iron Wolf drives. I now have an additional four terabyte Iron Wolf drive that I'm going to add into it. The DS1819 Plus has eight bays and currently I'm only using five of them. So I'm just going to add the additional drive to the bays. So there are a few things we're gonna to wanna to do before setting this up. First off, you need to be using a RAID level. If you're using RAID one, adding additional drives not gonna do anything and you should not be trying to expand a RAID zero array as it is very easy to fail. So I would recommend doing this with RAID 5 or RAID 6. Or if you're using RAID 10, you're going to have to add two additional drives to see any storage increase. So one thing to note, expanding a drive pool takes a very long time. And it increases in time with the size of the drives, as well as the total number of drives in the pool. So this can take a very long time. And I'm actually going to go through that and tell you how long it takes. This video is going to be actually filmed over a few different days as the expansion process can take a very long time. So before you expand your pool, go ahead and log into DSM. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is run a extended smart test on all of your drives. If you don't know how to do that, I'll link a tutorial in the description. It could take up to two days, but this way, any faults in the drives will get found out earlier on. And if one's corrupt, you're going to want to replace that before expanding your pool because expanding a RAID pool is very hard on the drives and this is a time where it's likely to fail. And so you don't want to have a drive ready to fail already there because it could cause significant issues later on. The other thing to do is make sure to back up all of your critical files before performing this. Though it should not cause any issues, there is still a possibility that your RAID will fail and you're gonna to wanna to have a backup of all the files you really need. I personally have a local hyper backup that backs up my entire array, and I've got a tutorial on that in the description as well. And so once you've backed it up and done an extended smart test and made sure all your disks are good, we can go ahead and log into DSM. So from DSM, I've not put in the drive yet, but we're gonna go through and make sure that all the disks are okay, just to check. So it should say storage pool normal. And if you go into your hard drives tab, you should see that these are all normal. And so if they're all normal, you're good. And so once you backed everything up and checked everything out, we should be good to go. Synology disk stations, the majority of them actually support hot swapping, but you're gonna to need to make sure that your specific model does support hot swapping, which is very easy to do. If it does not support hot swapping, just go ahead and power it off and plug the drive in and then power back on. But my DS1819 Plus does support hot swapping. So I'm gonna go ahead and hot swap one in now. All right, and so just like that, I didn't have to power off my NAS or anything. And I just plugged in the new drive. And so as you can see right here, it's now listed under not initialized. And so you can see it better here. So now let's go ahead and do some things first. First off, you're gonna to wanna to go to storage pool, configurations, and make sure you've got selected, lower the impact on overall system performance. 
This is something you want to do unless you have a very good reason not to, because while it will be slower to rebuild it, you'll get better performance out of your NAS while it's happening, and you will also not be putting as much stress on the drives, which is very important. Rebuilding a RAID consists of reading the entire drive. That means that it is very stressful on the drives. And so you really want to make sure to slow this down unless you really need it very quickly because that way there will be less probability of error. I forgot to mention earlier, one thing you're also going to want to do is I would highly recommend writing a bunch of dummy data to the drive first. And there are a bunch of scripts that already do this. And so basically what this does is it stresses the drive initially, meaning that if it's going to be one of those drives that fails in the first 10 hours, you'll find that out very quickly. Hard drive failure happens with a reverse bell curve, meaning that the most probable time a drive is going to fail is either in the first few days, and then after that, it's not likely to fail for years. And so by stressing the drive early on, you can detect any of those early failures, and if it survives two days of stress, that means it's probably going to last at least a couple of years. But always make sure you have a backup, and remember RAID in and of itself is not a backup. All right, so already you explained the pool now. However, there is one thing I want to do first. I'm going to go ahead and do a performance test of the drive array right now while it is fully intact, and do a performance test while it is rebuilding, and finally, once there's an additional drive in there, because adding an additional drive to a RAID array will speed it up. And so we're going to look at the performance there. So I'm going to use Blackmagic Speed Test, and I'm using Jumbo Frames with over a 10 gigabit connection. All right, and so as we can see here, I'm getting about 473 read and write. Oh, that updated randomly, but I promise it was about 473 just before. I stopped it right before the write cycle, and so it halfway started, so. But it was about 473 read and write, and so that's gonna be our benchmark. It's not gonna be perfect, but it should at least give you an indication of what the performance should look like. All right, and so now we're back in. Let's go ahead and expand the storage pool. So we're gonna go into the storage pool, action, add drive. And this is also where, if you wanted to, you could change the RAID type. So right now I have a RAID 5 array. What if I wanted a RAID 6 array? Since I've added an additional drive, I could convert this to a RAID 6 array. But that's not gonna be in this video. I'm actually planning on doing this in another video. So I'm gonna hit cancel all that. And I'm just going to add a drive. And so I'm gonna add drive number three, make sure that everything makes sense. Go next. And remember everything on this drive is going to be erased. Shouldn't be a problem, but just remember that. And so now, we're about to expand it, so let's hit apply. And I have started a timer. So I have no idea how long this is actually going to take. I'll probably check in and get percentages and timestamps for all of this. So we'll see how long it takes. All right, so one thing I totally forgot to do was do my first uh, speed test now that it is expanding. So the nice thing is, you can actually keep using your Synology while it's expanding, but let's see what the performance hit is. So actually, as we can see here, there was really no performance impact, and we're immediately getting that performance gain of that additional disk of writing. This is because we selected use the slower rebuild method, which means not only is it going to be better for our disks and not cause as much stress, but it's also going to give us much better performance when we need it, though the rebuild time is going to take a lot longer. So as we can see here, there was really no performance hit, and we immediately saw the benefit of that additional drive. So you can actually keep using your Synology very well during this. I was actually very surprised by these results. I'll do a few more tests to check them out, but it's looking very good. All right, I'll see you in a few days once this thing's done. All right, so now it's the next week. And so I actually did keep track, just kind of, it's pretty interesting to me, of the actual time it was taking and the percent complete according to DSM. And if you look right here, this R squared value is 0.996, and that is amazing. So basically it is perfectly accurate 
as to how long it's going to take. There was very little variance in how long the raid rebuild was taking. And I did not use my Synology too much during this time for heavy builds, so that makes sense. But for my 4TB Iron Wolf Drive, added into a previously 5 4TB Iron Wolf Drive raid, it took 1 day, 3 hours, and 23 minutes. So it's not a lot of time, but it is a pretty good amount of time. Another thing to note, these times will actually increase for you if you have more data in it. Mine was only about half full, and for those larger drives you can see very long rebuild times. All right, and so now we're back in DSM. And let's go ahead and check out the storage pool. We can see here that the drive has been successfully integrated into the pool, and we now have that additional four terabytes of capacity. Really, it's 3.64 because DSM takes about 10% off the top, both for itself and to ensure that you don't overfill the drives. All right, and so just like that, I have the additional capacity. It was super easy to do. This was a lot easier because it was just expanding to a larger RAID. If you're converting to something like a RAID 6, it is going to take a lot longer. And if you're rebuilding a RAID from like a bunch of four terabyte drives to want to do eight terabyte drives, that can take weeks because you've got to put in each drive individually and have it rebuild. It's also very unsafe. If you actually are planning on upgrading all of your hard drives at once, I would actually recommend waiting till DSM-7 comes out if you can wait the probably about six months until it does come out. This is because DSM-7 is going to have a feature where if you have an extra drive bay, you can actually use that drive bay to put in a fresh drive to actually clone another drive on your array. Then, as soon as it's done, you can actually just pull out the other drive and it will not have to rebuild because it will have cloned. The reason that this is so much faster is because the data is already on that drive that's in the pool. It doesn't have to be calculated from the parity bits, which is what takes forever when rebuilding an array. All right, and so now let's check out and see the speed increase that we get. So I'm gonna do the same black magic speed test. So if you look, you can see those read speeds are insane. That is not what my pool is doing. Really, that is being read from the uh, RAM cache that is hosting these files. So don't expect to get those kinds of speeds. But the write speeds have pretty significantly increased, which is awesome. All right, and that's really it. It is really incredibly easy to upgrade the drive space on your Synology NAS. All you've got to do if you've got that extra drive bay is just plop in a drive of the same size as the rest of the pool and it will do it really easily with a few clicks of the button. I hope this was helpful. Leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below, and have a good one. Bye.